Hi everyone, Shabby Gamer here and welcome back to another episode of our WWE 2K16 Universe Mode. Tonight is our next episode of Nitro. We're only three or four weeks away now. I think we're three weeks away now from our next pay-per-view, which is Elimination Chamber. We announced that last week. Elimination Chamber is going to be Brock Lesnar defending his Nitro Championship against Hideo Itami, Kevin Owens, CM Punk, Samoa Joe and Shinsuke Nakamura. This would be pretty damn cool, that is. I'm looking forward to that. But enough about that, let's have a look at tonight's card. We're going to start things off with our current Nitro Television Champion, Neville. He's going to be taking on Rusev. In match number two, we have Alberto Del Rio taking on Heath Slater. Match number three, you see Chris Jericho taking on Lex Luger. So this should be interesting. And then we've got Kane taking on Diamond Dallas Page. CM Punk versus Sergeant Slaughter. Kenny Omega versus Jake Roberts versus Ric Flair in a triple threat. And our main event, two of the guys... They're going to be in that Elimination Chamber. We have the former number one contender, Samoa Joe, taking on Shinsuke Nakamura. So we are just going to watch the three matches here today. We're going to be skipping a few of these. We're going to skip this one, which is a big win for Kenny Omega. I'm happy about that because we're trying to build him up in this feud against Neville for that television championship. That's pretty good. Um, CM Punk defeats Sergeant Slaughter again, building momentum towards that Elimination Chamber. Uh, Diamond Dallas Page picks up the win over Kane. That's a good win for him. And then we're also going to sim this one here between Del Rio and Heath Slater. Oh, my word. This game is absolutely crazy. I don't know what it is about this game. But Curtis Axel, Heath Slater, Adam Rose, Honky Tonk Man. They seem to be some of the strongest guys in this game. Oh, we're, going to have to, we're going to have to try and find a way to reward some of these people. I think Heath Slater, we'll have to give him a match. We might even uh, look at maybe potentially giving him a TV title match soon. Well, who knows? Oh, we'll, we'll have a look as we go on. So we're going to watch these three now. Neville versus Rusev. Jericho versus Luger. And Joe versus Nakamura. So without further ado, let's get straight to that first match. And here is that first match. Like I said, it's going to be Neville taking on Rusev. Neville, the current television champion here. Uh, Rusev, um, not done too well so far in this universe. I mean, he's had a couple of opportunities, but never really taken any of those. And never really uh, moved up to the next level. And he'll be hoping that a win here against Neville would really push him forward potentially after... Uh, the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view to potentially get an opportunity himself. So, it's going to be an interesting one, this. I'll keep talking now just to, so I haven't got to cut anything out and we can just go straight into the video, but uh, the loading screen's taking longer than I imagined it would do. It's probably because it's got a custom championship on Neville. And here we go, and I did have to cut quite a bit out of that. I don't know why, they're both real people. I don't know why I'd have to cut anything out, but there we go. And here comes our current television champion, Neville. And hopefully the championship's working this week. I keep fixing it every single week and it keeps going haywire again. Let's have a quick look, see what happens. There is the television show. Oh, for God's sake. 2K, just fix your game, please. Right, so the television championship once again is going to be known as the custom championship. It's not even custom, it's the real television championship. I'll, I'll put it to now. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this thing, I don't know. It's just Neville, he just he just breaks everything, doesn't he? That must be what it is. Well, anyway, Neville's got a great chance here to continue building his momentum forward to Elimination Chamber, where he's probably going to have to defend that championship against Kenny Omega. Omega's already picked up a great win this evening in a triple threat match, pinning the former 16-time world champion, Ric Flair. And that's only going to continue to boost up his momentum. And here comes the Bulgarian Brut. Rusev carrying a Russian flag, which still doesn't really make a lot of sense, to be honest. I don't know the Americans are trying to think it makes a lot of sense, but... I don't know. It might, I might be missing something, but I'm pretty sure Bulgaria and Russia are not that close. I think there was the whole Russian flag just a way to bring Lana into it. I'm not 100% sure, to tell the truth. It's been an interesting match, and you're going to have the uh, the brutish force of Rusev taking on the uh, the speed and the agility of Neville. So it's really going to be a way to really look at all the different aspects of wrestling. And I'm assuming in uh, 2K17, Rusev's not going to have boots on, so he doesn't break his bloody foot again. Oh, 
So a win here for Rusev would really enforce his position here as a potential future television champion. I really want to give him that opportunity as well. And I was, I was sort of tempted to put him in our, in our elimination chamber, but well, the match just sort of wrote itself, really, didn't it? Hideo Itami is the only one that would be slightly questionable, but he did actually defeat Lesnar a few weeks back. The only person to defeat Lesnar in quite some time, so we had to give Hideo the opportunity, even though he lost the television championship to Neville a couple of weeks back at the Backlash pay-per-view. Yes, it was Backlash, wasn't it? Yeah. And we are underway. The bell rings, Neville versus Rusev. It's going to be a tricky one, this. There's going to be a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, high-paced maneuvers from Neville. But if uh, Rusev can ground him and start to damage those legs, then this could end up being quite a convincing victory for Rusev. But it's a lot of ifs and buts, I suppose, isn't it, really? Just getting to real life now. Both these guys, I think, once the roster split comes along... I know Neville's out injured at the moment. He should be back soon. I think he got injured just before WrestleMania. Didn't he break his ankle or break his foot or something on them sort of lines? He, he, he must be back soon. He might be one of those sort of people that are... That are fit now, but they just want to save him for the draft. Um, but yeah, after the draft, I think both these guys are going to really advantage from that because they're going to get an opportunity to be a little bit higher up the card. Because at the moment, uh, at the moment, there's so many main event stars already that it's difficult for anybody else to really get into that main event picture. So uh, a lot of people are hanging around the Intercontinental and uh, and United States picture. But again, there's a lot of people that over the over the last couple of years or so uh, because they had nothing to do with them in the main event. They parked them in that United States and uh, and intercontinental picture. So it's been very, very tricky for guys like Neville to get a break. Obviously, Rusev, now the United States champion for the second time, which I think is a quite a good move. I like Rusev, actually. I know a lot of people don't, but I think he's actually a top... I mean, he's, he's a top wrestler. I think he's really good at putting over a feud. He's he's fantastic at playing the evil, America, uh, the evil sorry, foreign heel against the Americans. And the one thing they have to make sure they don't do is the one thing they did with Great Carly and try and make Rusev face at some point. Rusev is going to have to be a heel for his entire career. If Rusev tries to become a face, it's just not going to work. But yeah, I think it'd be fantastic with both these guys. And I think Rusev's even got a, a possibility in the future of maybe even going for one of the top championships on Raw or SmackDown, wherever he so ends up. No reason why not, because... I can't imagine it's going to be too much longer now for, well, for Randy Orton, definitely, because he's struggling so much of injuries over the last few years, and potentially even the same for Cena as well. He can't have a lot left in his locker. And I think I think they'll probably they'll probably keep Cena for as long as they possibly can. They might end up just cutting down his schedule and using him for some bigger shows and just use him more as a, a personality than actually putting on matches. Pinned by Rusev, two, no, it's only one count. But of course, we are going to have quite a few guys being lifted up from uh, from NXT as well. By the sounds of it, it was originally put down at roughly six to eight people come from NXT. But most recent reports I've read from uh, from Dave Meltzer and places, what a kick that is! Yeah, from Dave Meltzer and places like that, is that it could be as much as twelve people being promoted, um, which is very interesting. I say t t twelve people sounds like a lot, but when you think that American Alpha's two people straight away as one tag team, and then possibly um, Blake and Murphy maybe I don't know they've split Blake and Murphy haven't they I don't understand why they've done that because I don't think those two are any good as singles competitors I would have brought them straight up in the draft and had them as a tag team still I don't know why WWE like to do that they like to split their tag teams up but for me Blake and Murphy just work so well together it's the same with the primetime players I understand they want to try and get a little bit of singles competitive out of them but still I think they work so well as a tag team but that, that was the problem they had with the last draft. When the original draft they did when they split the two shows up. They had um, they split the Hardy boys, they split the Dudley boys, and none of it made any sense. Especially if they're considering going with a tag team division on both rosters, which is what I'm hoping they're doing. Make it completely separate. I'm hoping we get a separate tag division, a separate women's division. Uh, one show will get the IC Championship, one show will get the United States. And uh, a different world championship seems very logical now as well, because from what I understand, I've not watched Raw yet myself. Um, from last week, but from what I understand, they've now stopped calling it the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, and they're just referring to it as the WWE Championship again now, so it looks potentially like they could go and bring back the World Heavyweight Championship for either Raw or SmackDown, I suppose, it depends where the champion goes. I've got a feeling that 
Ambrose will keep the championship at Battleground, and I've got a feeling they'll end up staying on. Um, I've got a feeling they'll end up staying on Raw, and then uh, SmackDown will probably end up uh, getting the World Heavyweight Championship. That's the one confusing thing at the moment is that the draft takes place five days before Battleground, so there's no chance to really build up. To um, there's no chance to really build up, is there? Really? So that literally, the pay per view is going to happen. And then after the pay-per-view, everyone's going to go their separate ways. So we're going to have the Shield triple threat as the main event. But you can guarantee that after Battleground, Raw and SmackDown, the Shield are going to be split up into two separate shows. I'm, I'm sure of that. I don't think they'll both end up on the same show. Neville going to the top. I don't think he realised Rusev's back up to his feet. And Rusev catches Neville with that stiff forearm. But I'm really looking forward to the draft. To tell the truth, as soon as they announce the draft... I've sort of not watched any WWE at all because I'm just sort of waiting for the draft so much that I just can't be bothered with it now because it's I just I just want to see the draft. I want to see the two shows split up. I want to see guys being given more of an opportunity. This this could be great for the likes of Cesaro. AJ Styles could finally get the chance. I say finally, he's only been there like six months, but AJ Styles to get the championship, the club to be a tag team champions on either of the brands and you look at guys like Rusev and Neville and Del Rio can put Puck up into the main event and it's good and I, I think if if the likes of Barrett and uh, Cody Rhodes if they'd known what was coming up I think they would have stuck around I think it was only Sandow really that, that could have done well that WWE physically released themselves Rusev with a kick after that uh, Rusev with a pin sorry after that stiff kick is it going to be enough? it's not it's only a two count that's mainly because Rusev did the whole two steps forward, one steps back the situation that I uh, like to complain about very often. It annoys me. It really does annoy me. Now Rusev with Neville on his shoulders sends him over, dropping him flat on his back. And Neville could be in trouble here as Rusev for the second time in the match locks in the accolade. That camel clutch submission hole. But of course we know in this game that submission finishes are not very good. And that allows Neville the chance to come out of this one. That's why Rusev probably hasn't done very well in this universe mode. Rusev looking to stamp on the back of Neville. Neville avoids it though. Rusev now sending Neville into the corner. Big boots to the face by Neville. Spins Rusev around. Saito suplex. Now dragging Rusev into the middle of the ring. There is the pin. Is it going to be enough? One, two, no. It's only a one count. Wow. That is uh, pretty intense. N Neville really uh, struggling here against Rusev. And if Rusev can pull up a victory against Neville, like I said, you'd have to consider him as a, as a major contender in next month. Although I must admit, I'm slightly considering at the moment um, finishing this universe mode after Battleground, in real life Battleground, and uh, just running a simulation of, of, of the real universe. So we'll obviously download all the wrestlers that make their returns and, and do it like for like of what's happening in the WWE. Which I quite like the idea of doing that, to tell the truth. Rusev now rolling Neville over. Neville's back up. Arm breaker on Rusev. Rusev spinning Neville round. Brings him into the middle of the ring. German suplex. Neville folded in half, landed on the back of his shoulders and the back of his head. And bending that neck in an action that's probably not very healthy for anybody. Rusev now bringing Neville back up and there's another one of those huge kicks and surely that's going to be enough to finish off the Geordie. Rusev in with a pin. Rusev has crushed here. And he does pick up the victory. Massive win here for Rusev and I can imagine Kenny Omega backstage quite happy after his triple threat victory earlier on. Pinning Ric Flair. Oh and talking of the devil here is Kenny Omega signalling to Neville that he wants that championship and Neville... Has got a lot to think about now. He's just been defeated by Rusev. 
and Kenny Omega is on the heels waiting to charge. And here is the rivalry update. Kenny Omega steps up to issue a challenge to the champion Neville. So Neville's now on a cold streak after that. That is not good for Neville at all. Two successive losses and two successive weeks. And Rusev, momentum boost and now a hot streak as well. So he's laughing, really. He's just getting stronger and stronger in this universe mode. <coughs> and here is our second match of the evening. It's going to be Chris Jericho taking on Lex Luger. I think this may be the first time we've watched a Lex Luger match in this universe mode. So uh, let's see how he gets on. And here we go, both guys in the ring already, no entrance. And Jericho distracted here as the music of Alberto Del Rio kicks in. Del Rio making his way to ringside and Jericho needs to make sure that Del Rio doesn't get in his head. And this is exactly what Del Rio wants. Del Rio wants to distract Jericho and he wants uh, to essentially, he doesn't want to help Luger. But he wants to hinder Jericho and uh, at the moment it seems to be working. Jericho not taking his eyes off of Del Rio since he made his entrance, Del Rio going to sit down here by the commentary booth. He's just scouting his opponent, potentially. Uh, will that end in just scouting, or will there end up being some uh, some craziness? Partway through the match, we'll have to wait and see what happens as Jericho, I have no idea how, but he's just outpowered Lex Luger. And Jericho, what do you think about Jericho potentially moving to SmackDown to join the Cruiserweights? I know that sounds crazy, from the offset, but we have said in the past that that Jericho uh, was obviously one of the cruiserweights in WCW, in WCW when he first started his uh, when he first started his career in wrestling. So why not bring him back in and and let him fight against some of the cruiserweights down on SmackDown? No reason why not. We're going to be bringing back the likes of Eddie Guerrero into that division and people like that anyway. So uh, why not bring Jericho in there as well? Of course, at the moment he's tied up with a feud uh, with the old man at ringside, obviously Del Rio. So, at the moment, it's not going to happen, but maybe after Elimination Chamber, we can think about it. Luger now just wrenching at the neck of Jericho. And now Luger really showing his excessive strength here. What a big knee to the side of the head of Jericho as well. That's painful, that is. Very, very painful. Luger now dragging Jericho into the middle of the ring and dropping an elbow onto the inside of the knee as well. Brings Jericho back up to his feet. Into the ropes. And a stiff clothesline. Jericho goes down. Back elbow on Luger. And a sit-out scoop slam. And Jericho showing his own strength there by lifting a guy the size of Luger up there and taking him down like that. It's, it shows a lot of strength by Jericho. I say he started his career as a cruiserweight, but he evolved into a lot more than that when he came to WWE. And that was the problem with WCW. It was the problem that TNA had a few years back. And TNA were always such a great company for, for bringing through the young talent and creating their own stars. And they did a lot of that with AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, uh, Bobby Roode, uh, James Storm. A lot of them sort of people. Eric Young. But the whole of TNA just completely crippled when they decided they were just going to start to bring in all the big names. And when they sort of bring all the big names, they brought in Angle, Booker T, Kevin Nash, um, obviously Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff. And it just took away from the younger talent and it, it really affected TNA in a bad, bad way. And they're, they're trying to go back to their roots now. They're bringing in guys like EC3 and Drew Galloway, guys that guys that they well, they're already a star technically, but TNA are giving them the platform that WWE never did to show exactly what they can do. And I think that's, that's a really good thing by TNA now, but... They've got a lot of repairing to do because that time with Hogan and Bischoff and Booker T and and Kevin Nash just really just took the company backwards, really. I think Kurt Angle was very, very good for the company, don't get me wrong, but the other guys, they just sort of take away from, from what they already had. Kurt Angle did a great job of putting over some of the other stars. Kurt Angle's first matches against Samoa Joe and TNA were incredible back in about 2005, 2006, was it? Something like that. It was absolutely fantastic, but... Yeah, I think TNA really need to turn back around and do what they were doing. And that was the same thing with WCW, really. Um, they ended up losing a lot of top wrestlers because they were too busy pushing the likes of Hogan and Nash and Piper and Hall and all those sort of people. And because of that, WWE managed to take away from them Benoit, Guerrero, Malenko, um, Jericho. All the, all the young up-and-coming stars that had really big futures were all being sort of disregarded 
by WCW and WWE just took them all in and that's probably really what saved them. I think the movement from Jericho from WCW to WWE was such a massive, massive uh, part of the the shift in the, uh, the the Monday Night Wars. Obviously as well as the whole uh, Austin versus McMahon feud which helped quite a lot as well and uh, the creation of The Rock. There was, a, there was a lot of different aspects to it but I think WCW avoiding their younger stars and trying to uh, trying to go with the more established people. I don't think that really worked too well for them. And eventually the whole thing just collapsed. Luger now takes Jericho up out of nowhere into the torture rack. And can Jericho survive this submission hold? You wouldn't have thought, would you, really? Jericho versus Luger, a match of submission holds. Considering, uh, considering the look of them and then you'd think to yourself, well, you've got the torture rack and... You've got the walls of Jericho. It just seems to... Uh, if you knew nothing about wrestling and you looked at these two, you wouldn't have thought submissions, would you? You would have thought... You would have thought Luger would have some sort of power move, some sort of power slam or... A power bomb or... A jackknife power bomb or a choke slam or something along those sort of lines. Maybe, maybe we'll have to give Luger some sort of... Uh, finisher maneuver that is an impact one because obviously submissions, like we said in this game, don't really work. Jericho's okay because Jericho can revert back to the code breaker should he need it. Which obviously helps him out quite a bit. And Luger now is still just raking his foot across the ground. And Lesnar, and, uh, Lesnar, Jericho, sorry. And so far, Del Rio at ringside has not really got involved. And Jericho seems to have concentrated more on the match. But then again, Luger's dominating it for the most part at the moment. So maybe, uh, maybe although Jericho looks to be paying attention to, to Luger, maybe Del Rio is really what's in his head. What a fall away slam that was. Wow. It's like a pump handle fall away slam just sending Jericho so far across the ring. He crashed into the ropes in the turnbuckle. Jericho, though, playing a bit of possum and taking Luger down by his arm. It looks very, very painful. Jericho now sending Luger into the corner, and it looks like... There we go. Now, now that Jericho's back on top, now Del Rio using his distraction to... Oh, Jericho's come out to meet him here. They're face to face. Jericho needs to concentrate on the man that's crept up behind him. Stiff right hand and Jericho goes down hard. Del Rio claiming he did nothing and he didn't do anything, did he really? He didn't get involved at all. And Jericho needs to keep his attention on his opponent. Del Rio leaving the area now. Knows he's done enough damage as Luger just using the ring steps to his advantage now as well. Jericho looks in some pain. His shins hit the ring steps pretty hard then... His entire body bent over and his legs, his, his, sorry, his, his upper body hit as well again from an in, absolutely impossible angle. Jericho manages to run into the ring steps. Luger again bringing Jericho up and again into the ring steps. Luger slides back into the ring looking for a count out victory here. Jericho is down, he's hit them steps very, very hard several times. Referee's up to a seven. Jericho is back up on his feet though. I think he's going to make it back in. He does. But in what state are Jericho's legs? Oh, but a butterfly backbreaker out of nowhere by Jericho. And then a lion so out of nowhere as well into the pin. Has Jericho turned this one round? Two. Oh, no. Luger kicked out. A little bit glitchily, but he kicked out nonetheless. Jericho looks a little bit surprised by that, but he needs to concentrate, and there's the code breaker, and surely if the Lion Salt was a two, surely the code breaker is going to be enough to finish him off. Jericho drops into the pin, one, two, and really? Really? Luga kicks out. Luga kicked out from the code breaker as well. Jericho going up top, but Luger's just watching him, and Luger catches him with that right hand, and Jericho drops to the outside. And Luger's putting in a much better performance than we ever thought he would do. Jericho clubbing blow across the back of Luger, and another one. Jericho now sit out scoop slam on the outside, and the bigger they are, the harder they fall, and Luger's back hit the mat pretty hard there. Big right hand by Jericho now brings Luger into a suplex position and takes him down almost like a brain buster on the outside. Jericho slides back in now. Jericho's looking for, I was going to say he's looking for a count out victory, but Jericho's got up top. 
Jericho, think about this. Think, ah, oh, he's gone for it. Jericho hits an elbow drop from the top rope to the outside. That is incredibly painful and uh, a little bit dangerous as well. Referee's up to a four count. Jericho now bringing Luger back up to his feet and sends him into the ring. And Jericho doesn't want to win this by count out. No, he wants to, he wants to finish Luger off and as potentially could here. After a lion salt, a code breaker, an elbow drop to the outside. That big boot to the head as well. Surely there can't be a lot left in the uh, the locker of Lex Luger. Oh, but a big boot to the face. Maybe I was wrong. And a big running forearm as well. Luger into the pin. Can he steal this one? One, two. He has. Where on earth did that come from? Is that running forearm his finishing maneuver by any chance? I don't know. That seems a bit odd. That seemed really odd that he pulled off the victory from that. This is the butterfly backbreaker earlier on, which followed straight into a lion salt. Very dangerous move, the lion salt. A lot of people probably don't notice that, but uh, just ask Hayabusa. Well, you can't ask Hayabusa now, but still. And there was the code breaker as well, straight after. And I was convinced that was going to be a free count. How Luger survived the lion salt and the code breaker, I've got absolutely no idea. But not only to do that, but to come back and win it? That's the thing. One of the things that frustrates me about this game is that we saw, we saw a lion salt and a code breaker, but what won the match was a running forearm, and we're going to see that right here now. The big boot to the face by Luger, and then followed straight up with that running forearm. It must be his signature or his finishing maneuver. But either way, it was enough to keep Mr. Chris Jericho down, and Luger gets the free count. So Del Rio is going to be very very happy about that. Of course, currently Jericho and Del Rio feuding. Of course, Del Rio was at ringside for quite a chunk of this match and did lend a hand in uh, in Jericho's mind, not being 100% where it should be. But still, that's not going to affect Luger. Luger picks up a big victory here. We've not seen much of him in this universe, maybe with wins like that, we might see more of him. And here is the rivalry update. Rising tensions, a tense rivalry between Chris Jericho and El Bato Del Rio heats up. So Jericho has still got a momentum boost, but he's lost all his hot streaks due to that loss. And uh, Lex Luger's gained himself a hot streak from that, so uh, he's doing well. And let's go straight to our main event. And here is our main event. It's going to be Samoa Joe taking on Shinsuke Nakamura. A vital opportunity for both these guys to gain some momentum going into that Elimination Chamber match in three weeks' time. And here we go. New Orleans. Is it Lafayette? I don't, it's, not, it's not Los Angeles, is it? Honestly, it's Lafayette. I don't know if Lafayette is a place in New Orleans. That's not right, is it? So I'm gonna have to Google this now because I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I really am. Or, or is it Lafayette? I don't think Lafayette's a state, though, is it? It's Louisiana. Where the? Oh, what am I on about? Is Lafayette in New Orleans? I, 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 I give up. I, I apologise to all, um, all the Americans out there for my real poor knowledge of, of, of anything really. Geographic. I've, I've never been to America, though, tell the truth. I, I don't know how that's an excuse, but, uh, yeah. I, 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 knew it, I knew it was Louisiana anyway. I don't know why I even thought that, because I've been watching a lot of um, a program called Ghost Adventures recently, which I, I don't know if a lot of people in America might know. I think it's on the Travel Channel. And um, th they do a lot of stuff in uh, New Orleans because of the history of voodoo and things like that. So, yeah, I, I should know. I should know that. Sorry if you can hear me clicking. I'm just trying to... Uh, I I'm, I'm away next week, so I'm trying to record and edit as much as I possibly can ahead of time. So what you can hear me clicking is I'm just setting up a video to edit while we're doing this one. It's uh, highly unprofessional. I should have done one before the other, but um, I want to make sure I've got everything uploaded before I go away. Because I'm away for a full seven days. So I'm, I'm recording a lot of these videos up front, and I just want to make sure that everything is ready to go. So, effectively, I'm away, but hopefully nobody will notice I'm away. Which is probably about right, because, yeah, you know, nobody ever notices I'm away anyway. Oh, I may have buggered up the last video. So, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Samoa Joe. Both these guys going to be involved in that Elimination Chamber. And 
Literally, that Elimination Chamber, really could anybody walk out with a championship? All six guys in that match are absolutely top, top class. And well, we all know how good the Nitro roster is. It has a lot of strength and depth. And the main event picture is absolutely incredible. So that's why I, I was going to do some um, some qualifying matches for that Elimination Chamber. But, but really, I didn't think we needed to. I, I wanted to make sure that the best six guys in the roster were in that match. And I think Hideo Itami definitely deserved to be in there. And, uh, and these all guys um, deserve to be in there as well. The Joe obviously had a very poor showing at Backlash against Lesnar. But still, I think um, I think he's still a, a valuable asset to have in that match. He's, a, he's an incredible wrestler and he's only getting stronger and stronger. And I can't wait to see him on the main roster soon as well. I'm a, I don't know if it's going to be part of the draft or not. Because he is still the current NXT champion. And I believe the man in the ring with him right now. Uh, without giving away too many spoilers, is the number one contender for the NXT Championship. So I wonder if that means that both those guys will not be involved in the draft, or whether one of them might be involved in the draft and not win the championship match at, at NXT TakeOver, or what? I'm not 100% sure. I know the next NXT TakeOver does take place the same weekend as SummerSlam, and I think that's TakeOver Brooklyn once again. I'll tell you what, Joe versus Nakamura is going to be an incredible match, isn't it? It's going to just be an incredible, incredible match. There's just so many. It's just, it's just, oh. it's just, 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 it's just. You can't even say how good it's going to be, can you? Really? And I think that's the thing with Nakamura. There's so many sort of dream matches we need to get through. Um, it's a little bit of a shame that that Punk is gone, and it's a little bit of a shame that Daniel Bryan had to retire as well because Nakamura versus both of those two would have been incredible. One that I'm really looking forward to is one of my favourite matches I've seen in the last few years was Nakamura versus Kevin Owens at Ring of Honor Takeover. Um, was it World War? No, what was it? What was it called again? We've done it ourselves in the universe mode. It was War of the Worlds. Yeah, War of the Worlds. I think it was, and um, that was an incredible match. I think that I think at that point Kevin Steen, it was at the time, was the Ring of Honor champion and. Nakamura was the Intercontinental Champion. I might be wrong on that, but uh, no, I am wrong on that. Steam was just there because I'm pretty sure the championship may have been Elgin versus Styles versus Okada in a triple threat match, which again was incredible. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing Nakamura and, uh, and Owens collide in WWE once again. Uh, but yeah, but this match here between Joe and Nakamura at some point is going to happen in NXT, and I, that's, I can't wait for that. There was a match that's going to be aired pretty soon between Bala and Nakamura as well. So be sure to keep an eye out for that because, again, that's going to be incredible. And the one thing that I also like about the fact that they're going to be stealing people from NXT, which I know sounds bad for the, for the people out there that loves NXT, but you've got to remember that NXT is a developmental. So the idea is, is to get to a point where these guys are going to be very, very useful on the main roster, which... 90% of the NXT guys are now, I think. They're at that level. So by bringing them up to the main roster... Also, if they bring up 12 people onto the main roster, that opens up 12 spaces of NXT for newer guys to get an opportunity. So guys like Biff Busick, who I'm waiting to see wrestle again because I know they're giving him a new name and I cannot pronounce it from reading it. It looks incredibly difficult to actually pronounce. So I'll wait until I hear exactly how that is pronounced. Uh, but hopefully he's going to get a lot more TV time now. And I'm sure he will get a lot more TV time now. And... Especially if, if a lot of people move up and we might see a new tag team. I know we've got the Authors of Pain have come in now as well with Paul Ellering. So um, I'm hoping we're going to see more and more new people come in. Oh, look at that. And Nakamura landed so badly there as well. Of course, we've got Rich Swan, who I'd love to see a bit more on NXT television. But I don't know if they're just going to keep Rich Swan solely in the Global Cruiserweight Championship. But no reason why not, because they're using Gargano and Ciampa quite a lot on NXT and... They're both in the Global Cruiserweight Championship. Or what is it now? They've changed its name, haven't they? What is it? The uh, the, the Cruiserweight Wrestling Classic or something on them sort of lines? And it's CWC in it. Something like that. Big slam there by Samoa Joe on the outside. And referees up to a five count. But this match still continues to collide on the outside. A little bit of a rhyme there. It was unintentional rhyming. Don't get me wrong. Referees up to a six count. And Samoa Joe... Is back up to his feet on the seven. Does slide back into the ring. Both these guys stare each other down. Meet in the middle of the ring. And it's Joe with a short jab to the face of 
Nakamura. Now Joe sending Nakamura into the corner. A little, a little bit of a rhyme there for you. It's all fun and games, isn't it? Now Joe has Nakamura in a very dangerous position for Nakamura, but Nakamura reverses then double knees to the back. Taking Joe up. Joe slides free, though, into a DDT. Joe had Nakamura well scouted there. Nakamura back up and takes Joe out with that stiff clothesline. Joe back up to his feet and catches Nakamura before he can hit a second one. Joe now front chancery taking Nakamura across the ring to the ropes. And Joe just staring at Nakamura now. He's not impressed, is he? <coughs> and Joe locking in the Kikina, the Kokina clutch. I can never say that. I always struggle. But unfortunately, submissions are not fantastic, Joe. You need to hit the muscle bust, I'm afraid, man. There's the pin. Has he sucked enough life out of Nakamura to win it? He hasn't. Nakamura kicks out. Joe now locking in the head scissors on Nakamura. Couple of elbows and a third elbow to the forehead as well. Joe back sent on, dropping his entire body weight across the chest of Nakamura. Brings Nakamura back up to his feet. Joe with the German suplex keeps hold of his grip. Into the dragon suplex. Again holding his grip and holding on for a straight jacket. He bridges in for the pin. This could be enough. One, two, and three, and it is. A massive win here for Samoa Joe. After a poor showing of backlash against Brock Lesnar, he's turned it around a bit now. Have a fantastic victory here over Shinsuke Nakamura. Trying to suck the life out of him here with a Kakina clutch. And I think, although this wasn't the end of the match and the pin wasn't the end of the match, I think the damage done in that submission hold was the end of the match, really, because Nakamura had nothing left to fight against this combination from Joe. A German suplex into the Dragon suplex. And then finally into a straight jacket. Bridging for the pin as well. Nakamura, if he'd just had a little bit more whereabouts with him, he probably could have reached his leg out and grabbed a hold of that middle rope with his foot and got the rope break, but either way, Samoa Joe's picked up a great victory here. He needed that after his poor loss at uh, Backlash. He needed to continue to try and rebuild his momentum, and with six guys in that elimination chamber, it's going to be incredibly difficult. You're going to need as much momentum as you can take in. So guys, that's the end of this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Of course, if you have, then be an absolute star and hit that like button, and of course, if you are new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well for a lot more of the WWE 2K16 Universe Mode. I've been Shabby Gamer, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for our next episode of Tuesday Night Raw! I don't know why I did that. Bye!